It's Canada Day long weekend. And how do we celebrate the second largest country in the world? Well, we hit the mountains. Come along as we join friends both old and new on an incredible weekend that we won't forget. And of course, everyone's favorite adventure dog comes along for the ride. Animals aren't hard to come by here in Canada, but we'll take this baby deer crossing the road as a good omen that this weekend is going to be one that we will remember for a long time. Let's get into it. With a quick meetup and introductions, we were all excited to hit the road. Now Jason, being the leader of the convoy, assured us we could not start this long weekend trip without stopping at Longview Jerky Shop. It's world famous. And let me tell you, no one regretted Jason's decision. It is so good. So good. Don't worry, Barrett got plenty of jerky on this trip. With fridges full of jerky, it was time to hit the highway for about an hour before we could hit the trail. Nothing quite beats the feeling of finally hitting a dirt or gravel road after getting off the highway. That's when you know the fun's really going to start. Right off the bat, the mountains are in view and everybody is excited to get rolling. But first, a quick stop for everyone to go over the game plan of the day. Uh, we're going to hit the 40 from here, and then tilt on the 40 for a few minutes, and then we'll head up that uh, mountain. This is actually pretty The problem with these beautiful places is people don't clean up after themselves. Turns out we had word that the Crow's Nest Pass was still covered in snow, and we had a few big rigs, including myself. So we decided that we would do some exploring and try some other trails that were around the area. With a good trail in mind, and a hopeful empty camp spot right beside it, we were on our way through the mountains to see what we could come up with. The views are amazing, but I promise they only get better from here. Turning off the trail, it was decided that the biggest rig, the one with the trailer and the truck bed, would have to stay down here and they would remove their jeep off the trailer and drive up and meet us. Pretty quickly, we realized that this was going to be one muddy long weekend. But hey, mud equals fun, right? Well, hey there, neighbor. <laughs> Great trail. We were headed to the base of that mountain. That's where we planned to camp, but it would also be the start of the trailhead. Here's hoping nobody's already there. Okay. 
And with a little bit of luck, probably from that baby deer, we were the first ones here and the only ones here. Being able to pick a spot in an entire bed of flowers at the base of the mountain. I, quote unquote, have been able to camp in a lot of places around the world, but when it comes to being Canadian, nothing quite beats camping in the Rockies. The group will be seeing a lot of rock beds this weekend. Hopefully everybody comes out without a scratch. It was a pretty unanimous decision that this is going to be the spot that we will spend the night after we run the trail. When it comes to airing down, nothing quite beats a preset PSI deflator. That way I can focus on entertaining Barrett. With some tents set up to save our spot, it was time to walk a little bit up the trail to decide which direction we would come from. Just got to check out if my truck can make this climb or maybe come on a decline and do the whole trail all the way around. I'll have to talk to Jason about it. Now the camera doesn't do it justice, but this is a 30 grade hill. Look at this view. Let's go. After some discussion, it was decided we would head back down, go around to the end of the trail, and run the trail backwards so that we could hit the 30 degree slope going downwards with all the big rigs that we had. The four Jeeps seemed to not have a problem with us two half tons following along. Mud water and mountains doesn't get better than this. I did not know at the time how much water and mud we actually would deal with on this long weekend trip. Before heading to the trail, we heard about a nearby waterfall and hey, why not? Let's go check it out. Some might call this a waterfall. I kind of call it a slip and slide or a water slide. Either way, it was a great spot for especially Barrett to dive in and cool off because you can't keep a Chesapeake Bay Retriever out of the water. Once I dealt with Barrett's I don't want to leave Chesapeake attitude, I got him back in the truck and it was finally time to start that trail. Starting our ascent, things would start getting narrow real quick for us half tons in the back. All those cool jeeps up front make it look easy though. Turns out we weren't the only ones on the trail. A couple of Tacomas were up ahead and they pulled over to the side as much as they could so that we could squeeze by. With the help of Jason doing some ground guiding, we were able to make it through, no problem. 
Good to see you again. Nice. Lots of room on that side. Looking good on this side. Yeah. Pull this way. Yeah. We got lots of room over here. So. Yeah, maybe pull this way. Woo! Thanks, boys. Anytime the trail leveled out, you were guaranteed to find water. We had a lot of rain the prior week, and so this weekend was going to be a wet and wild one. Fun Canada Day fact, did you know that 90% of Canada is uninhabited by people? My favorite part of trail running is the fact that I'm running an F-150. Compared to most of the rigs you usually see on trails, I really get excited when I can find out what it can be capable of. What's your favorite part of trail running? Let me know in the comments. All in all, everything was going great. Everyone was having a great time. Everyone was having a blast speaking over the walkie-talkies. It was fun all around. You could not ask for a better day to start off a Canada Day long weekend. Like any good trail, we once again came across an obstacle where half tons need a little guidance to squeeze on through. I really didn't want to grind up against a boulder. If you've never done this before, it's pretty important that you listen to your spotter and follow the directions that they give you. Okay, coming straight. You're out of the hole in the back. Now turn to your left, passenger. There, there we go. Clear the As opposed to me driving over top of it. I did that once already. Straight ahead. Going straight. Going straight. Okay, keep going straight. We just want to make sure. Okay, hard drivers. Like a pro. Nailed it, buddy. Nailed it. A good spotter will have your safety and your best interest in mind. To say that I always camp with great people is an understatement. These guys are awesome. The fun and the challenge isn't over yet as we still have the rest of this rock bed to cross. It's areas like this one that test your knowledge of your personal vehicle, its capabilities, the right tire pressure you should be running. All of it comes into play if you don't want to feel like a martini shaken, not stirred.
a few hours later and we only had two somewhat difficult obstacles to get through and that's been a successful trail run. If you remember a little while back, that 30 grade hill that we walked up and checked out, well, here we are, sitting at the top of that hill. Good vehicle control and listening to my ground guide is what's key here. With the trail complete, it was finally time to park the truck, set up camp, and start cooking dinner. After a little spot organization. No, you're good. You're good, man. You're gonna go right there? Um, I was gonna turn around. Okay, I was gonna back into like right there. Of course, as all adventure dogs love, they love to get out of the truck at the end of the trail and finally run around. One of my favorite things about the overland community, the off-road community, and camping community is everybody has their unique style of doing things. And a little bit of everybody's personality seems to land in the way they do those things as well.
So if you guys see here, I got a 17 foot hose. I quick connected everything, including my fire can. So I never take that propane tank out of the trunk. I just reach that hose wherever I need it. With an action packed day, some of us were ready to go to bed. You may be thinking, look, it's still daylight, but in Alberta in July, it's still daylight even around midnight. The rest of us started a campfire. Near the end of the first day, we gathered around to just hang out and chat about the day and get to know each other a little bit better as a lot of people today didn't know each other until about seven hours ago. With a perfect view behind us, it was time to end day one of what would become a three-day epic long weekend. <laughs>